Bye. Bring your eyes into the spotlight with Lumify Eye Drops. Lumify dramatically reduces redness to help your eyes look brighter, wider, and more luminous, radiant, vibrant for up to eight hours. Lumify. You won't believe your eyes. Sweet pillows of softness. This is soft. Holy Charmin. <laughs> Excuse me. Roll it back, everybody. Charmin Ultra Soft is so cushiony soft, you'll want more. But it's so absorbent, you can use less. Enjoy the go with Charmin. Tomorrow, Hugh Hefner's Playboy Reckoning. Hef was a predator. Happening now. Cold and blustery outside and some areas of a light wintry mix. We'll take the latest look at radar, see who's getting what and what's going to happen the rest of the night and how much temperatures warm up into the weekend in just a bit. If this cold snap has you remembering last year's winter weather and the power outages, you might be thinking portable generator coming up. What you should know about size, price and safety. But before you head out the door for that generator, we have the city and CPS Energy's responses to this winter weather and if the grid is ready for freezing temperatures. The News at 5 starts right now. And here's a live look outside from our city cam, which is at 410 and 281 looking at the airport. And one reason I'm pointing this out is because you see these little liquid raindrops on this camera. And oh, there's one that just fell behind me there. And notice how they're moving. They're not freezing on contact. So that indicates that we have liquid just rain falling from the sky and sure a little bit of sleet could be mixing in with it here and there around parts of town, but especially up into the hill country. Here's a look at the batch of precipitation that just moved past our camera there. That light green indicating the very light rain again mixed in with it. It wouldn't surprise me if we had a little bit of sleet here and there. Here's the bigger picture and you see some greens. You see some pinks on the screen. The pink is where the radar thinks we're seeing more so or more of a wintry mix like a little bit of sleet mixed with freezing rain scattered about here and there through the hill country. Not problematic right now. And the reason is our road temperatures. Road temperatures are still up and most of what you see falling is very light in nature. What you're seeing here, road temperatures, not air temperatures. Even through these clouds, our sun can warm up the ground a bit and it's helped us out a lot today. Road temperatures in the hill country, lower 40s around San Antonio, closer to 50 degrees for those road temperatures as we go through the evening hours. Just a little bit of a mix, about a 30% left over at 8 o'clock. Then by 10 o'clock, just cloudy and cold, not as windy through the night tonight, but it's going to get chilly. I'll break down how cold and where because we're going to see some teens in some parts of our area coming up. All right, Adam, we'll see you in a bit. Thank you. Let's take a look at the roads right now with our trans guide camera. And of course, there was the concern this morning about a slick morning commute, but fortunately, not too many problems out yeah, there. Yeah, it's not too bad right now. Our Stephanie Jimenez joins us live from the east side with a look at what is going on on the roads right now. Stephanie. Okay, so right now I am standing by I-35 and Pine Street, and this is the perfect location to show you exactly what you can expect if you're about to get on the road in just a bit. So behind me, you have an overpass. To the right, you have I-35, which you can see some vehicles there on the road, and to the distance, you have 281. And what you're seeing is, yeah, traffic is flowing pretty smoothly right now. We've checked inbound and outbound traffic on our major roads. Everything looks easy -peasy. Easy. And part of the reason is because crews have been getting ready. Takes text dot maintenance crews have been pre treating the roads. We're talking I 10, I 35, the interchanges since yesterday. We just confirmed that they stopped putting down that solution, that brine at at um, 350 this afternoon. And that brine is basically a mixture of salt and water. And that solution is what keeps vehicles from slipping and sliding on the roads. And it is working. The roads are calm. So let's give you another live look at our roads from our trans guide cameras. And yes, even though it is rush hour, you just don't see as many people on the roads, which explains why there also haven't been many accidents either. Keep in mind that school districts close buildings today, so a lot of families stayed home. A lot of people don't see a reason to get on the roads right now. We spoke with TxDOT, and they're also saying that we got lucky 
for two reasons. One of them is the temperature. You know, we have been just above freezing at a lot in a lot of different areas, which helps. The other thing is that we haven't had a lot of precipitation. We are getting some right now, as I just heard Adam say, but really not much to make a difference. Now, obviously, this is all good news as we discuss our roads, but you have to remember there are a lot of vulnerable people in our community that don't, aren't comfortable with this weather. So we do want to know what leaders are doing to keep them safe. So earlier today, we know that San Antonio and Bear County leaders got together at the Emergency Operations Center of Bear County to give the public an update on what they're doing to keep people safe. Our Erica Hernandez joins us live from the Emergency Operations Center with more. Erica. Stephanie, the city and county are not taking any chances when it comes to this weather. They're making sure that they stay communicating amongst themselves and also are prepared for any kind of winter weather. Now, the city, county, CPS, Energy, SAWS, VIA, and TxDOT all gave updates at the press conference earlier this afternoon regarding where they all stand in their efforts to prepare and respond to any hazardous events. As of right now, the city's ice plan for road closures has not been activated. They remain in a holding pattern. CPS interim CEO Rudy Garza said there have only been minor outages. And as for the rest of the evening and tomorrow, we should be in good shape. I am looking at ERCOT's uh, supply and demand uh, status right now. And we've got, you know, well over 7,200 uh, megawatts of available capacity above what uh, the state is using right now. So ERCOT's in good shape. Uh, all of our plants uh, are uh, up and available. As for SAWS, they want to remind everyone to protect their pipes, especially those who had issues last February. Now, the city also brought up warming centers that have been open to the public. RJ Marquez is live at one of those centers with more details on how the city is keeping the public warm. RJ? Yeah, thank you very much, Erica. And we are here at the Garza Community Center. This is one of four warming centers that the city has opened up, again, to really help out with those vulnerable residents that need a place to stay warm tonight. And we were just, we've just been told that there are people here inside this center right here as uh, we get ready for it to get a little bit colder throughout the night. So the four locations are located throughout the city and will stay open through tonight and into the early morning hours for the general public if they need a place to stay warm. City officials say these centers will have COVID safety protocols in place and also have social distancing inside. Free masks will also be made available to anyone who needs one. And yes, uh, pets are allowed into these warming centers as well. The city wants to make sure that doesn't stop people from coming in. The pets will be kept in a separate area. That's something that we just found out as we got here earlier a little while ago. So another big question is about transportation. If someone needs to arrange any sort of ride over here, VIA is giving free fares to these warming centers and will also work with people to get them there. All you have to do is call one call 311 against that is called 311 and you can get a ride over here to one of these warming centers. So this is a bit of a shift from last year. If you guys remember when the city opened the Gonzalez Convention Center as the primary warning center, I asked Deputy City Manager Maria Villa Gomez if last year's winter storm played a role in where these centers were placed this time around. Last year, for example, we opened the convention center as a warming center, an overnight shelter, and we didn't see as much individuals using that facility. So the thought was to uh, open it up out into the neighborhoods to facilitate transportation and better access to our community. All right, and these warming centers will stay open until noon tomorrow, and they have enough capacity here. They're ready for about 500 people if they need to get here, and they can come at any time throughout the evening. And we also know that Bear County has six six warming centers as well, and they are now going to be open till noon tomorrow. That's new information that we just got. Stephen Myra, back to you. Very good information, RJ. Thank you. Now we're continuing our weather, our winter weather coverage. Let's go up to Bernie right now. That is where we find KSAB meteorologist Katie Blake. She is downtown in Bernie there. So Katie, much different conditions where you are right now. 
Hey, you guys, things are fine right now. In fact, we've got a break in the precipitation. When we got into town about an hour ago, there was still some very light sleet falling. But Bernie has been one of the places today that has had reports of sleet, even a little bit of freezing rain around. And if you can see the sign behind me, the Cibolo Creek sign, you'll see some very tiny little icicles there. So it does look like some of the elevated surfaces around Bernie have some light icing. But roadways here in the city are just fine. I-10 up to Bernie was also just fine. So um, that's another uh, point that Adam mentioned. Road temperatures are well above freezing. So roads are great, but I want to point out here just the difference in temperatures between the surfaces and the elevated surfaces. Those are some of the places that have seen a little bit of icing like that Cibolo Creek sign. So I'm going to point our temperature gun here at the sidewalk. We've got 39 and a half degrees. Meanwhile, just a little ways up to this pole here and we're below freezing at 31 degrees. So when we talk about elevated surfaces, that is some roadways like bridges and overpasses, but it's also things like this and maybe even some signs around town that could see a little bit of icing and to quote Adam Caskey, oh baby, it is cold. Stay bundled up if you must be out tonight. Back to you, Myra. All right. Thanks so much, Katie. Reporting from Bernie this evening. We are not done with this winter weather, so we're not done with our coverage. Our coverage will be continuing throughout the evening and into tomorrow. You can stay up to date right here on KSAT 12, KSAT.com as well anytime. And you can also download the Weather Authority app for all your updates. I liked Katie's quote of Adam Kasky there. That's nice. All right, moving on to the latest COVID-19 numbers in Bear County Metro Health reporting 5,841 new cases and 10 more deaths with seven day average 5,970. There are 1,263 COVID positive patients in the hospital. 277 are in the ICU. 116 people are on ventilators. There are signs that the latest surge could be slowing down at this point. There are still a record number of people hospitalized across the country with COVID-19. All the while, some hospitals, they're dealing with staffing shortages with nearly 159,000 patients in hospitals. This is a pandemic high. There are some good signs, though, that this Omicron wave could soon reach its peak with cities like New York and Chicago finally seeing their case numbers go down. And coming up tonight on the news at six, we're talking to local infectious disease Dr. Ruth Bergren, getting answers to the biggest current COVID questions. Have cases peaked in San Antonio? Any signs that this surge is starting to decline for us here locally? Plus, given how contagious it is, is social distancing effective when it comes to Omicron? The case at Q&A is coming up at six. Two other news now. One of four men shot on Martin Luther King Day has died. He is identified as 61 year old Johnny Mobley Jr. He died Monday night at a bar on Spriggsdale Boulevard near I-10 and MLK Drive. Someone shot at a crowd of about 30 people. Four people were hit, including Mobley. The suspect hasn't been caught yet. Meantime, a woman found shot to death last night, identified today as well. She is 40-year-old Rimsa Joy Sanders. The San Antonio police found her about 845 last night on Mary Diane Drive on the far east side. She was shot while inside her car, a motive unknown. SAPD is still looking for that suspect. Well, the weather hasn't gotten cold enough to break out a generator yet, but if you bought one last year, chances are you might not have had to use it. Coming up, we're going to talk generator safety, and for those who still want to buy one, which would work best for you after the break. Ford owners, listen up, about 200,000 vehicles recalled because they could roll away. The issues with the brake pedals. High temperature and humidity can cause the pedal bumper to separate from the brake pedal itself. Vehicles could then shift out of park and roll away. 2014 and 2015 Ford Fusions, 2015 Ford Mustangs, and 2014 and 2015 Lincoln MKZs are being recalled. Customers can take the vehicles to the dealer for a fix. New at 5, portable generators. It's something you may not have thought much about until last winter when the power went out. As we head into our chilly season this year, 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz with what you should know before you buy.
That's a sweet sound if and when the power goes out. And as temperatures drop, interest in portable generators is heating up. A lot of it is uh, residential people coming in because uh, they, they want to have enough power to keep the essentials running. Uh, your fridge, your lights, uh, your heating and all that kind of stuff. They remember last year. Oh, yeah. So how do you know what size? Northern Tools Dominic Rodriguez says that depends on your needs and some calculations. 2,000 watts will run your fridge, a few lights and phone charger, but if you want to power the house, you'll need more. Look to spend about $1,000 for that. These portable generators all run on gasoline, so of course there's the risk of carbon monoxide fumes. So always, safety is key. These are not ever meant to be in an enclosed space or uh, inside at all. Not even the door Way. They should be at least 20 feet from the house. Some newer models feature a built-in sensor. If it detects a certain level of carbon monoxide, it automatically shuts off. If you already own a generator, maintenance is key. Use fresh fuel and don't leave untreated fuel in it. Make sure spark plugs are good, your air filters, basic maintenance on it. And crank it up once a month to be sure it's going to work when the power does not. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Glad we didn't need those this go round with this winter weather, but it's definitely been a little shock to the system today. It has, and I, I'm, I'm glad though we didn't get the slick roads and some of the yes. things that, that we could have got with this with this particular storm, Adam. Yeah, and you know, I was on I-10, or I should say 1604, coming from I-10, and you know, their expansion project, those workers were out there all bundled up today, working hard, and they were out there doing their jobs, and it was a cold one out there. It's gonna be cold tonight and to start the day tomorrow. Our light wintry mix is coming to an end just within a few hours here. And then by this weekend, it's back to 50 degrees. I know that's not exactly warm and it's below average for this time of year, but it just also shows that we're not in for a prolonged freeze. This is not like what we had last February. Actually, tomorrow we'll be well into the 40s. We'll get into that in a moment. Let's talk about the precipitation and what we have ongoing still in the hill country and what you see on the radar makes it look like it's coming down heavier than it really is. The ground truth is really just very light in nature. Those pinks indicating some sleet little ice pellets, frozen raindrops mixed in with freezing rain. Now the freezing rain's different where it's liquid when it falls, when it hits an exposed surface, like a street sign that Katie Blake showed you earlier, that's when it immediately turns to ice. And it can be the most problematic type of wintry precipitation, but not in this instance. It's not coming down hard enough and temperatures just aren't quite cold enough. But you look across our area, still around Kamal County, Moving out of Bulverde, pushing eastward, about to approach New Braunfels. You've got a batch of light rain mixed with some freezing rain. And south side of San Antonio, nothing right now. Nothing south of Highway 90. You go north of Highway 90. Notice how the algorithm just switched this over to a pink color because we actually are seeing some little pockets of very light freezing rain, not on the roadways, not on the sidewalks, just on the street signs and even some leaves and branches. If your car has been parked all day, probably a little bit on your car, a little bit of light glazing. What's really been helping us though, within this batch of very light freezing rain, road temperatures. Road temperatures are mostly still in the 40s and we can even get specific to where that precipitation was falling. Uh, look around to the north side of Bear County in San Antonio where we've had the wintry mix and road temperatures are estimated to be in the 40s. Let's get to Wurzbach Parkway between 281 and Morgan's Wonderland. And look at that road temperature about 46, 47. Now that is computer derived and an estimate, but it's been our experience that it's been fairly accurate, at least within a few degrees. And in this situation, a few degrees is not going to make the difference between freezing and not freezing. So future cast shows eight, nine o'clock, a little bit of precip east of San Antonio. It's moving out of town by 10 o'clock. It should pretty much all be out of here, but a lot of moisture is going to be down to the south of us. You get down into the valley, there's going to be some good moisture in terms of needed rainfall, but also mixed in with some wintry precipitation through the night tonight. Around here, our sky is just going to be cloudy tonight, and we're not expecting much, if anything, after 8, 9 o'clock. You can see on our live cam, those liquid drops, some of them might start to freeze because it is an exposed surface. 33 degrees at the airport, dew point in 19, of course, dry air. Actual air temperatures, 28 Helotus, 30 Bernie, in the upper 20s in the hill country, but still hanging on to 41 in Carrizo Springs and 43 Catula. Of course, it feels a lot colder. You factor in the wind and the wind chills have been in the 20s all day today, even teens in the hill country. This wind, however, 
is going to be diminishing. You look, take a look at the forecast. By midnight, gusts to only 17 miles per hour. That's not so bad. And tomorrow, I don't even think you'll notice the wind. It's going to be north at about 5 to 15. So, yes, cold to start the day tomorrow. We're talking air temperatures in the 20s, some teens in the hill country, even 21 Bernie, though, 23 Timberwood Park, 27 Lackland area, and Elmendorf. And by the afternoon, we make it well above freezing. We're in the upper 40s to near 50 with a lot of sunshine, some lingering clouds in the morning, then sunny in this weekend. We've got temperatures back to 50 degrees. Good rain chances Sunday night into Monday. Precipitation of the liquid variety. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Adam. All right. How good has the Spurs player been? He is threatening a record held by David Robinson. Yeah, that's pretty good because DeJounte Murray is playing lights out yeah. of his career, yeah. not just of a game or a season, of his career. When we come back, more about that. DeJounte Murray's performance, it led him to his A-triple-double. And what does Mike McCarthy say is his number one off-season priority? Coming up. Our San Antonio Spurs finally able to pick up their second win of their seven-game homestand by beating a team that is also struggling this season, the Oklahoma City Thunder, and they did it behind DeJounte Murray's A-triple-double of the season. After news of Bryn Forbes' trade to Denver broke, Trey Jones returned to the Spurs lineup, meaning the full squad was finally back together for the first time since January the 5th, and they played like it. Jumping out to the early big lead, Devin Vassell gives the Spurs a 12-point lead with that three, and then their largest lead of the first half when DeJounte hits his three, and at the half, the Spurs are up 69-51. In the second half, Doug McDermott is back with a vengeance, including four three-pointers in the third, and the lead balloons to 25, 90 to 65. But the high of the night was Murray's between the legs pass to Drew Eubanks, who throws down the huge slam over two Thunder defenders. That's worth looking at again. Manu-like pass between the defenders' legs to Eubanks. That's one of DJ's 14 assists to go along with his 23 points, 10 rebounds for his eight triple-double this season. 12th of his career, just too shy of David Robinson's franchise record of the 118-96 route. He's playing all-star basketball, uh, you know, and he'd, he'd be in consideration if we had a better record. Uh, but he's just growing by leaps and bounds in every way. DJ's playing incredible right now, and we all just thrive off of him. So, you know, he, he does it on both ends of the floor every single night, and he likes to get it going in transition. So that's a shooter's dream, and, uh, you know, guys are just playing really hard right now. And next up, the return of Patty Mills for the very first time as a Brooklyn Net tomorrow night, 7.30 at the AT&T Center. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Dallas Cowboys defensive coordinator Kellen Moore and defensive coordinator Dan Quinn both interviewed for the Vikings head coaching position today, and both are expected to be with Miami as well. At the same time, head coach Mike McCarthy holding his first press conference, his calls from more than one media outlet demanding his ouster following the Cowboys' colossal collapse against San Francisco in the first round of the NFL playoffs. Part of that collapse was the Cowboys' problem with penalties, 14 for 89 yards as part of their season that lost 1,103 yards and 127 yellow flags, which is second in the NFL. McCarthy says that's his number one off-season priority. We've been coaching penalties since week one. I mean, it's uh, so uh, it's it's something that you know, particularly the holding and the pre-snap penalties. Those are the two that jump off the charts. Uh, so uh, we, we definitely, definitely need to be much better in that area. And is Dejounte finally in the top ten of voting in the All-Star fan balloting? Find out tonight at ten. All right. Thank you, Greg. You got it. We'll be right back. A little bit of lingering light rain mixed with some light freezing rain and freezing just onto some street signs and branches and leaves, but not problematic. Road temperatures, as I showed you before, still mostly in the 40s, so that works in our favor. But some roadways just a little damp out there, and in the hill country, we still have another hour or two of so those scattered wintry mixes moving through. 20s tomorrow morning. By this weekend, we're talking 50 degrees for highs. All right. Thanks, Adam, and thanks for watching the news at 5. See you back here at 6.